So businesses are faced every day with decisions. For example, how can they decide between two different projects? Which one should they undertake? Well, the net present value is one investment appraisal technique that a business may choose to use when deciding between two different projects, for example. And it's a technique that comes up time and time again throughout the SEMA syllabus, and it's one that you'll need to understand and be familiar with in your exam. So let's take a look at exactly how it works. And um, we'll start with a basic net present value for a company called Buzzing Batteries, who, after a successful few years, are looking to expand and open up three new shops so they're able to start selling their batteries directly to the public. Now, instead of building a shop from the ground up, the company have decided to acquire three retail properties. They know the cost of capital was 12%. And they have the following cash flows forecast for this project. So management want to understand whether this venture is going to add value to the company. And so one way to do that is to find the net present value of the proposal. And the first step in every net present value calculation is to find the net cash flow for each year. And so this is just the difference between the cash inflows and the cash outflows for the business. And in this example, it's nice and easy. So for year zero, we've got two cash outflows, which we add together to find the net cash flow to be 5.135 million. And then for years one to years four, we only have cash inflows. We've got a single cash inflow for each of the years. So the net cash flow is just these inflows. So that's nice and simple. OK, now the next thing we need to do is to find the relevant discount factors. And as I mentioned earlier, we can use the discount tables to look up the relevant figures. And so having the tables handy is a really good idea. And you'll find the discount factors for year zero to year four, where the cost of capital is 12 percent to be the following. So now what we need to do is to calculate the present value for each year, which is simply a case of multiplying the net cash flow by the discount factor for that year. So for year zero, for example, we've got a net cash flow of minus 5.135 million. We've got a discount value of one. So multiplying those together, we find the present value to be minus 5.135 million. For year one, we do exactly the same. So we take the net cash flow, so 2.34 million, multiply that by the discount value of that year of 0 0.893 to find the present value to be 2.090 million. And we do exactly the same for years two, years three, and years four, multiplying the discount factor in each of those years by the net cash flow for that year. And doing those calculations, you'll find the following present values. So the final step then is to find the net present value, which is just a case of adding up all of these present values, being really careful to make sure that any cash outflows are negative in your calculation. So in this example, then summing together all our present values, we find the net present value to be equal to four million six hundred and seventeen thousand. Now, from the introduction to this section, can you recall what a positive NPV means? Well, that's right. It's a good thing. It means the three new retail shops will generate four million six hundred and seventeen thousand in value for the company over four years. So the project would provide investors with a return above their 12% cost of capital. And so Buzzing Battery should go ahead with the new stores. Now that's a basic MPV. Let's step it up a level and using the same Buzzing Batteries example, let's now add in additional factors to demonstrate other concepts you'll need to be familiar with when completing net present value calculations specifically relevant costs and scrap value. So relevant cost, as a reminder then, are those costs which will only change as a result of a decision being made. And scrap value is just the value of an asset at the end of its useful life. So again, the cost of capital is 12%. And we start with a basic pro forma. And you can see that there's no values against some of these figures, which means we need some extra information in order to find them. So firstly, we're told that 
the cost of land and buildings includes £100,000 which has been spent on legal fees. Now the question we need to ask here is, are legal fees a relevant cost? Well no, legal fees are a sunk cost because they've already happened. Buzzing batteries are going to incur this £100,000 whether or not the project happens. So therefore, we need to reduce land and building fees by £100,000. So instead of the cost being £4.225 million, it's now only £4.125 million. So we can pop that into our pro forma. Now, next, we're told that 55% of the office overheads were actually a charge made for maintenance and services to head office. And again, the question that we need to ask is, is this relevant to the project? Well, no. The 55% allocated overhead charges are relevant because like with the legal fees, the head office will need to be maintained whether this project happens or not. So again, we can adjust the given cost of the office overheads accordingly, and we only need to include 45% of that in our calculation. So 45% of 165 is 74,000. So that just goes into our pro forma like so. Right, now finally we're informed that Buzzing Batteries intend to sell the new store at the end of the fourth year for four million, which includes 75,000 pounds on fixtures and fittings. Now here, all of these costs are relevant. So the full four million goes into the pro forma like so. And now we can go ahead with the process we carried out in the basic NPV example. And you may want to rewind just to refresh your memory of the first step, which is calculating the net cash flows. So finding the difference between those cash inflows and outflows in each year. So for year zero, for example, we've just got two cash outflows. So if we add those together, we find the net cash flow for year zero to be 5.035 million. For year one, we've got one cash inflow, so 2.34 million, and then we've got three cash outflows. So remember, we need to deduct these values from our inflow. So if we do that calculation, we find net cash flow for year one to be 1.07 million. And then we do exactly the same for years two, three, and four. So we find the difference between the cash inflows and outflows. And doing those calculations, you'll find the following. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, that's right, we find the discount factors. And the cost of capital is exactly the same as it was earlier, it's still 12%, so we have exactly the same discount factors. And then like before, we just need to multiply these discount factors by the net cash flows to get the present values. So for year zero, we just multiply our discount factor of one by the net cash flow to get the present value of minus 5.035 million. For year one, we just multiply the discount factor, 0 0.893, by the net cash flow to find the present value. And then do exactly the same for years two, three, and four, multiplying net cash flows by the discount factors. And then the final step, like before, is just to add all of these together to find the net present value. So doing that simple calculation, you'll find the net present value when we're including relevant costs and scrap value is equal to 1,507,000. And again, we can see that the net present value is positive, which as we know means the project should be undertaken. So that's a more complex example, and hopefully you can see that the key to successfully calculating the net present value is being really methodical. It's asking yourself the question of whether or not a cost is relevant, and making sure you take care when you're performing each calculation. So making sure you're really conscious of those values which are negative in the calculations to make sure you get the correct net cash flows and then the correct present values. So that's a brief introduction to net present value calculations. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Remember to check out the other videos on our channel, like, rate and subscribe. Thanks for watching.